So we're going to talk about genetic engineering. This is a new lecture for me. This is the first time I've presented this one. And this is really a new concept. And in fact, I hadn't known really what to call it. I had thought about doing biotechnology threat or menace. What have we gotten ourselves into? What do we do now? Or really, you tell me. And that is the concept of this. What we want to do is talk about some fairly controversial subjects in the field. And I won't call it a bioethics talk, but we're going to get into that. This is something where the ground rules, we're going to be, of course, polite and respectful to one another. I want to have one conversation at a time as we go through this. We'll have mics, so grab a mic if you have something to say. And the little question and answer pieces interspersed through here. But I still claim the power of supreme moderator. So I will cut off discussion when it suits me. And I appreciate your cooperation in advance. Um, this is a confidential discussion. I want to have a very candid discussion here. We are going to video this, but we're not going to distribute the video outside of the GSP-12 crowd. And what the plan was, and unless a miracle has occurred, this doesn't work out quite. We were going to use the clickers as we went through to vote and then talk about the results interactively. The clickers were lost until just 15 minutes ago. They found the clickers, but we still don't have the receiver unit for the clickers, so they're not going to work. So I was thinking about tap dancing, but what we're going to do is, if you guys are okay with this, I'd like the idea that anonymously you'd be able to click and you could register your vote, and then people who wanted to could talk about how they had voted, what selections they had chosen and why, and it would be anonymous for people who chose to be anonymous. But since we're not going to be able to collect the data, technical difficulties, um, what I would like to do is still, we'll raise hands, and if you want to participate, do. And we'll just go ahead and get around our technical difficulties. Does that sound pretty good? OK. Yes. We won't do that, and that's a little complicated, and I want to just mainly have the discussion. I think that'll be the, the fun part. We can always go back through, but thanks for the suggestion. So uh, again, voluntary participation in the discussion. The idea here is we lecture you guys to death, so we wanted to make this a little more interactive. And this is a first try, and help out. I mean, if something is going right or wrong, make it work the way you want to. You're responsible for what we're doing here, and we'll get better. So this is everything I wanted to talk to you about. And I tried to come up with a little organization, sort of a timeline from you know, past, present, future. And I kind of organized the topics into this rough industrial versus clinical, or sort of human and everything else. And let's just jump right in. So a little bit to get started. I like to talk about Neolithic biotechnology. And what I mean is for about 10,000 years, we've been breeding plants and animals to make them do what we want. So these cave paintings in, in France show these aurochs that were basically the precursors to cows until we bred them to what we wanted them to be. Um, here are the ancestors of dogs, apparently eating an eohippus, a dawn horse. And inexplicably almost, we've bred that to look like this. And we've done the same thing with grasses in the plains outside of you know what you would consider modern day Tel Aviv, and turn that into wheat with a much greater yield and, and greater productivity. We've also even domesticated um, microbes, because if you look at it, anytime somebody's making wine or beer or bread, we are using microbial technology, and we've bred these so that they'll work for us correctly. So for about 10,000 years, we've been pulling this breeding and artificial selection stuff. But now, people say, we can do basically the same thing but much quicker whenever we make genetically modified organisms. We've talked a little bit about flavor saver tomatoes. Have an anti-sense gene in there that keeps 
um, a ripening agent from expressing. So you can see tomatoes that have ripened and tomatoes that were picked at the same time that were genetically engineered to not ripen. Now this was not so commercially successful because it turns out those weren't quite as tasty and people were a little worried about this. This was uh, not something people wanted to necessarily partake in. There have been some uh, similar problems with the idea of Bt corn. Bt is a bacillus, a protein from a, um, a bacteria. And this has been used for like 20 years naturally to kill off insects and not affect higher organisms, people or animals. And this has been sprayed on crops. Well, they incorporated this into the genetic structure of corn. And this has kind of gone back and forth. So let's get into uh, the idea of GMOs and what I call GM 2.0s. The, the next generation that's sort of coming down the pike, we've got a lot of different improvements that we're trying to do to these organisms. And this is sort of the green revolution 2.0. So first question is, should we consider crops and livestock that are GMOs, should those be any, treated any differently in a regulatory sense, in a personal sense, in, in a government sense, in an economic sense, from uh, any of these organisms that are produced from traditional breeding? Okay, so let's get the mics out and raise your hands if you have something you wanna talk about. 